Welcome back to JR Pro Shop Vids, everyone. Today we'll be talking about misconceptions in the bowling world. So today we'll have Jimu and Simu on the lanes again, demonstrating some of the misconceptions that really aren't true that I've heard in the pro shop many, many times and I've had to correct people. So Barks, what's the first one up? Biggest thing that we hear about, long patterns mean heavy oil and short patterns mean light oil. So a lot of times we'll see bowlers using their biggest, strongest hooking bowling ball in the long patterns. And we also see them using their weakest shiny ball in the short patterns. So the two patterns we have today, on the left lane, we have titanium, that's 44 feet. And on the right lane, we have Broadway, 37 feet. So even though these patterns are very different in length, they have almost the same volume of oil. So with a similar amount of volume, on the long pattern, we're gonna see the stronger balls hook a little bit earlier as the oil is spread out a little bit more. And on the shorter pattern, that oil is a little more condensed. So the ball's gonna get through the front part of the lane a little bit easier and change direction a little bit harder. So to demonstrate, we'll have the boys throw their weaker, shinier balls on the short pattern and their stronger, duller balls on the long pattern. And we'll see how that looks. back from the lanes from throwing their weak shiny balls on the short pattern. What do we see with their barks? Do they look okay? So for both of the boys, they tried playing a little bit inside and swinging the ball out to the break point. And it was just a little too inconsistent. Sometimes it would push a little bit too long and come in behind the head pin. And sometimes it would just take off and hit the dry and go through the face or go Brooklyn. And for the most part, this has to do with the shininess of the bowling ball. It doesn't dig into the oil in the front part of the lane and over responds to the dry. So now that we've mentioned what some of the mistakes are that some bowlers make on the short powder, using weaker balls, shinier balls that are very unpredictable and inconsistent, what are some of the mistakes that bowlers make on the long? So a lot of times what bowlers will do, they'll take their strongest asymmetric ball with a lot of surface and try and play straight up the boards because they think it's not going to hook. But the truth is it hooks too early and runs out of energy. So let's go see what that looks like. the lanes throwing the really strong balls on the long pattern. How did that play out? Well just like you said with all the other league bowlers we get in here that make that mistake the ball just rolled too early didn't retain enough energy down lane and we saw a couple of 10 pins we saw the boys miss the pocket a little bit to the right leave a 2-8 210 so there really wasn't enough motion down lane to really have that good carry percentage lots of corner pins lots of two pins stuff like that. So now that we've seen the common mistakes that a lot of bowlers make on these patterns Let's see how to properly attack the long and the short. through a couple of strikes out there. Looked pretty good. What were your thoughts, Barks? So for Simu, he went to a strong asymmetric solid ball. It's proton physics. That got the ball digging into the oil a bit earlier and gave him a little bit of a smoother shape down lane. He got a little bit of room to miss right and left and still hit the pocket. And for Jimu, trusty pitch black up the ditch. That gave him the most room for error and the ball never overreacted.
we saw what the boys did on the short, how do they do on the long with the proper balls in their hand? Just as good as on the short. Uh, we had Simu into his parallax effect, a nice asymmetrical pearl shiny ball. He was able to get down the lane nice and easy, save its energy, and really corner really hard down lane. And he was able to pack a few strikes in there. And he missed a little bit right, ball hooked back, hit a little light, carried, missed a little left. He was able to hold that line, still hit the pocket nice and flush. And for Jimu, he used the original parallax, which as you can see in one of my previous ball reviews, hooks just a little bit less than the parallax effect. So for a two-hander, perfect for him. Uh, he was able to play a pretty similar line to Simu, and the ball went down the lane pretty easy, made a nice left turn into the pocket, gave him that, that air room and a nice entry angle into the pocket. All right, we're about halfway through the vid. Question time with Barco. This one's a good one. So my question for you today, we've talked about a lot of misconceptions in this video. What's the worst piece of advice you've ever gotten from a fellow bowler or a coach? Let me know in the comment section below. Can't wait to read this one. Oh, by the way, we read every comment. So let her rip. <laughs> Jungo, what's the worst piece of advice you've ever received? Well, when I was a junior bowler, 15 or 16 years old, uh, one of the coaches told me to get more revs on my ball. Lift it harder, baby. <laughs> we all know that's not true. So our next misconception is using urethane on dry lanes. We have a lot of bowlers in the shop that think that they need a urethane ball for when the lanes dry out and they need a ball that doesn't hook very much and very smooth and predictable. But as you can see, just in our previous misconception that a very oily short pattern, Jimu was able to use his pitch black and that's exactly what it's for. Pitch black, urethane balls, they need oil. They need a lot of oil in the front part of the lane. Uh, Barks, you wanna expand on that a little bit? Yeah, so what happens when we throw urethane on drier patterns, they use the energy up so quickly, they have nothing left when they hit the pins. You see a lot of flat tens, flat sevens for the lefties. It's just ugly out there. And also for a lot of bowlers, if they're throwing urethane on those drier conditions, they may not see the ball hook at all because it's hooking so early, it's at their feet. And in turn, they don't see the ball shape at all down lane. So that being said, urethane's definitely not ideal on drier conditions. It may not be great on your house shot at your local center. So if you look back at one of our previous videos on tips for house shots, uh, the boys threw urethane on the house shot and it didn't look very good. It didn't create the ideal shape down lane. It hooked a little too early for both of them. So we're gonna have the boys throw urethane on a house shot that's about a day old. It's been sitting out there for a while. It's been bowled on a little bit. Let's see how that looks. boys are back from bowling with urethane on a house shot. How'd that look? Absolutely terrible. So the boys, they tried to play like their normal house shot line that they would use with reactive and the ball just hooked really early and had nothing left down lane. Uh, they even missed the headband to the right just because the ball used up its energy so early and had nothing left to corner down lane. So then they tried to move right and play right on top of the friction out on the ditch around five board. It hooked even earlier and it ended up going Brooklyn and through the nose from a couple of shots. So there's just absolutely no room to play with urethane on a house pattern, especially if it's a day old, right? It just hooks too early. So bottom line, there's just not enough motion down lane for a pitch black or any urethane ball to score well on a typical house pattern or a pattern that's really dry on the outside and oily in the middle. All right, so pitch black looked terrible on the house pattern. So we laid down a short pattern here, lots of oil in the fronts, and let's see how it looks. better than marks? A whole lot better than it did on the house shot. So the characteristic of urethane, it really wants to dig into the lane. So it needs a lot of oil in the front part of the lane to get it to skid down to the break point. As you can see on the Broadway pattern, the ball didn't hook nearly as early as it did on the house shot, but it didn't overreact when it hit the dry either. As you can see, the ball reacted really, really nice. A lot of flush strikes for the boys. Looked really good on the short pattern. 
All right, so another misconception I hear a lot, pin up bowling balls go long and pin down bowling balls roll really early. So if you look at the dual angle layouts, for me personally, pin down bowling balls have really high core numbers and BAL numbers. So something like 75 by four by 75. And in translation, that means long and smooth. All right, Jordan, I know sometimes you'll have two of the same balls, one that's laid out pin up and one that's laid out pin down. What do you see in the differences in reaction of those two bowling balls? See the pin up one definitely stands up earlier and hooks more. So one of the best examples that comes to mind is my idols. Uh, I've drilled maybe six of them. I got a couple pin down ones and I use those mainly on the fresh because they're really smooth, really predictable, right? And as soon as I need to move a little bit left, those just don't have enough legs down in the back end. So I got to go to a pin up one and that really corners a little bit harder and hooks a couple boards more. So I can move in and it'll kick out that 10 pin when the pin down ball just is a little bit too smooth down lane and not able to cover enough boards for me. Just to elaborate a little bit more, uh, if I know I'm going to a tournament with a short pattern or really flat, low ratios, really tough, I'm gonna bring a couple pin down bowling balls for sure for the fresh, just because I really wanna control that back end shape and I really wanna have a, that predictable motion until the lanes start to burn up and then I can move in and go to something that's pin up that really corners. There is definitely a noticeable difference between the two, four to five boards I would say between my pin down idle and my pin up. Drilling your balls, pin up, pin down, you're definitely gonna get two very distinct reactions. Pin down definitely does not mean roll early. It means roll later and smoother. So last but not least, our last misconception of the day, what worked last week in league is gonna work next week in league. A lot of factors that go into how the lanes are gonna play for your league session. Um, you may start with the same ball, but you may be bowling on a completely different pair of lanes. You may be bowling with different people. It might be a different temperature outside, different humidity. There's a lot of factors that go into what a bowling ball wants to do on the lane. Even the people on your team might be throwing different bowling balls. Somebody might be throwing urethane on top of where you normally play. There's just so many different variables that are going to change from week to week. So it's important to have a good arsenal of equipment so you can adjust depending on the day. So it might be the same oil, the same pattern, the same people you're bowling with, but there's just too many variables. It's never going to be the same. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Make sure to check out our new website, shop.jrproshop.com. We got some new apparel, we got some new bowling balls, some vintage bowling balls, they're brand new in the box. Make sure you check those out.